So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Now, it's interesting here because if you remember when Peter denied Jesus, how many times did he deny him? He said three times. Right before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Three times he was in denial to Christ. Three times now we see Jesus asking him, Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And we see, we see the powerful actions that Jesus has taken to get through to his disciples. He gets through to them in, this, in the, the part we just read with the, the similarities, with the same exact thing, withdrawing the net and getting their attention that way. And then we see here with, with Peter. This had to have rung home, if not right then, later on, Say, man, I denied Jesus three times, and now he had to come back and ask me three times, do I really love him? You know, do I love him? And, um, but he did, and, and, and you know, this is how Jesus dealt with him. But there's another aspect of this that, that I want to I wanna touch on with this story. Because there's a lot of pastors out there, and a lot of preachers, that, and some of them are good guys, you know, they're saved or whatever, they're, you know, but they get caught up into this going back to the Greek to really understand more about what we're, what we're learning and what we're getting from the Bible and say, you know what? Yeah, you could read the Bible, but I'll tell you what, when you go back to the Greek, you get all this extra meaning and this hidden knowledge and all this other stuff. Don't buy into it. Okay, you don't need that. God is fully capable of giving us His Word in any language He chooses, in every language that exists, He's able to give us His words with the full meaning and comprehension that we need from His word. And what people will do oftentimes, and, it, and I would guess a lot of times preachers like doing this. Sometimes, I mean, they've, they've, I know that there's got to be some honest people out there saying, you know what, they think they've learned something neat or special and they're going to share that with people. But what ends up happening is you don't know Greek. And then they say, well, I do. And I'll tell you what this really means. And when they start doing that, now all of a sudden you need to rely on the preacher man to tell you what the Bible means because you don't really understand this. And this is what they used to do in, in, you know, in Catholic churches. They would just have whole masses and Latin and all this other stuff. And it's like, you know, people don't even speak that language. They don't even understand what they're saying. Well, you just need to rely, just do what I say because I know this stuff and you don't. And when people start listening to um, a pastor that says, oh, but in the Greek it says this and this is what it really means, even inadvertently what they're doing is casting doubt onto what you're reading in English. You say, well, can I not really get that from the English reading? Now, some preachers that'll do this, they'll say, oh, and in the Greek it means this. They basically say exactly what the definition of the word is, which you don't need to tell you the definition of the word in Greek because that's exactly what it means in English too. So thanks a lot for telling me that, buddy. But sometimes what they'll do though is they'll try to make up these extra doctrines and it's real dangerous because you get people who, they don't know the language. They'll just go to a lexicon, they'll go to some dictionary and that'll be their authority on what these Greek words mean. So they'll have, you know, the Strong's Dictionary and Strong's Concordance. And I'm not saying it's inherently bad to have those things. But what I am saying is that if you're going to rely on the definition that some man makes up for a language that you don't know to help you to understand God's word, now you're going to be treading in serious waters because it's, that's going to lead you into false doctrine. And one of the false doctrines that we get is in this passage where, and this is very pervasive. This is, this is a very common thing that's been taught of the difference in the word love. So in the English language, we have the word love, right? In Greek, they have a couple of different words for the word love. 
They've got agape, they've got phileo, and, and if I'm not pronouncing it right, it's because I don't speak Greek. Okay? So forgive me if I'm not saying these words right. I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't speak Greek. But I do know the Bible. I do know the Bible in English. And I do know that God has preserved this for us today and that we don't need any other language. That we don't need to learn a special language. God didn't say, well, you need, the only way you're going to be able to understand my word completely is to learn Hebrew and Greek. That's not the way he operates. But what they'll say, and you could, and I'm going to prove this wrong directly from the Bible. 